if anything, that's a bit I'm quite cool. I like it. <laughs> Got good energy. Today. Let's have a look then, Dave. Are we alive? Hello, everybody. Um, Dave is cool enough, apparently. <laughs> yep. Like frosting the snowman, my friend. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Um, but yeah, it's just checking we're live. And uh, can you hear us? We're coming through loud and clear. Mm. If um, if you have just joined us, do um, drop in the comments. We've got, uh, I think Vicky's on the uh, comments today. She is, yeah. Who do you think is going to be first to comment? I think it's going to be Tina Barrett. <laughs> of course it's Tina Barrett. Yeah. Uh, welcome, Tina. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, hey, Laura. we got Marky V, of course. Namaste, mate. I hope you're all doing well on this um, glorious Tuesday. Um, we got Shona as well. We got Suzette, Jim, Shona. Absolute pleasure to meet you on the weekend. Yeah, um, yeah all recovered. Still getting over it. I'm not going to lie, Dave. It's just, we're, we're aching this morning. Aren't we? Yeah, I'm not as bad as you for reasons I think we'll get into, muscle wise. <laughs> um, you know. No, but it was it was good. Uh, here we go. We got we got Vicky here dancing yetis on the comments. Great stuff. We got sit out. We got. G'day, Leah, all who, the way. Who's that guy down there? I don't know. I don't know who so, Bri Bri is. Bri Bri, no. <laughs> uh, welcome, Bri. It's first Tuesday tune in. Yeah, um, welcome. It must be at least probably a couple of days since he's done a marathon. Knowing him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he does a lot of running. And you've got the dancing yeti as well. So uh, here we go. We've got the dancing yeti. Um, and we got Mark, uh, Dutch. We've got Andrew. We've got Sophie. Hey, Sophie. Um but no, Leah, I hope everything's okay. I heard there's some bad flooding over there. So I hope um, yourself and family are all well. Um, I know it's further down south, isn't it, in Sydney? But um, yeah, it looks like, looks nuts, really. Because what is it now? Yeah, it's sort of winter over there, isn't it? Dry, it's mad, mad amount of rain. Yeah. But anyway, I hope you're all good. Um, Stuart, hey, guys, sorry, Mr. Stuart, Greco Challenge. Yeah, Stuart, it was, uh, we were talking a little bit about that today. Just, um yeah, because it, it was certainly a, a, a bit of a toughie this year. Definitely I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> right, I'll scratch that off. Yeah, the, the bog. <laughs> the bog, the of, bog of hell. Yeah, it the, was. Yeah, we'll... Um... No, I don't want to talk about it. We'll see. We'll, we'll, see yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. Guess on. We'll get into that. Um, but look, today, yeah, we, you know, it was Independence Day yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we always like linking in with something that's kind of local. Crack open a can. Just crack open a beer, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those days. Uh, is that Independence Day? No, and we thought about, you know, what about being independent? See, we have a little bit of a little bit of a link. Um, oh, that's where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> um, to solo tracking, because you know, about being independent and and, and and kind of taking care of yourself um and what you can do from from doing that and the benefits as well, because you know, there are times when you know you are on on your own uh, on a trek. You know, you're never on your own for long. But sometimes it can feel like you're on your own if you're going through a difficult patch. Yeah. And I thought, you know, we, we can talk about that because we do get questions around, you know, from people who want to jump on trips and they're booking on their own. They're not with mates because none of their mates want to go. But they're like, no, no, but I really want to do this. Yeah. And, you know, it, it can be sometimes something that can get in the way of, of dreams can be, you know, if, if you are on your own, um, you know, and what's it like if you're a solo trekker? So we wanted to kind of tackle that really and talk about it today. Yeah. Clearly, there would have to be a little bit of a link um, to independence, or even if it's um, a teeny one. Well, I remember having a chat with Shona on the weekend. It was yeah. great to meet everybody. We met Shona, yeah. Paula, a couple of Marks, other... T yeah. Mark as well, Mark yeah. Williamson, I think. And uh, yeah, it was absolutely amazing to see some other trackers. Yeah, no, it was really, really yeah. good. Um, as soon as we pulled in with people waving at us and stuff like that, it's really strange. But I remember talking to Shona, and Shona yeah, was saying that she always wanted to do these types of trips, but yeah. you know, not everybody. You know, maybe one out of ten people in a friend group or two out of ten is yeah. interested. So yeah. it actually can be quite a challenge to get someone to go with you. Um, but she took the plunge and actually went and did her first trip on her own. I forget what yeah. she said, but and absolutely loved it. And I always think that that apprehension is always about the first time. Once you yeah. do it and you realize that, you know, you'll learn a lot about yourself on that first trip. You'll learn that Excellent. actually you are quite self-sufficient. You are quite strong. You know, you are, you know, capable of doing these things. And the next ones are easy. Yeah. I know some people that love traveling on their own. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw the hint. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I, you're right. As soon as you do it once, the, the very first time I went traveling, which wasn't, you know, in, in Nepal, um, I think it was the first time I went was actually Thailand um, on my own. And it's certainly, um, you know, there's things you learn about yourself. But you're right, it is the bump so, you need. Was that a trekking trip and to Thailand? Or? Nope, it wasn't. It was mainly mainly diving, scuba diving. Oh, right, the opposite way. The opposite way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in in a different. There's even less oxygen element. than altitude. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of, kind of uh, yeah, definitely less oxygen. 
but no, the um, you know, when you go in on your own, it, it does bring about these these things. But once you do sort of you know get over that hurdle, um, you, know, you start to enjoy it. And yeah, also as well around independence, because you know, we, we always think it's always nice to have a guide and it's nice to to have a team around you. Yeah. But when we were discussing this, because you know, we we, we like to think we're a little bit organized these days. Yeah. Uh, with planning our Tuesday tune-ins. Um, um, yeah. Hey, hey, Sarah, how you doing? Kate um, Ramsey as well. Kate's on it as I, well. I, she, um, she done it on her own. I did the last time I called her name out on a live. Uh, she won. Wow, Kate. Yeah. Oh, I, I, and she was on a live recently, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. Yeah. Kate shared her experiences of uh, what it's like to actually be a winner. Which was, um, yeah, which is always nice because it's been a couple of weeks actually since we announced a winner. Wasn't yeah. It? I, I remember chatting to the. Um, uh, I can't remember if it was Paula, was it Paula? Uh, Paula Reed on the weekend. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, and um, she was telling us what it was actually like, you know, <laughs> when you call out that name. <laughs> Sorry, I love Shona there. I have a lot of friends I also couldn't travel with. I killed them. Um, yeah, that's always a good reason to go on your own. Uh, <laughs> Dye Fizzbark, she's yeah, here. Dye Fizzbark, how you doing? Stuart Taylor. Um, I know he was, um, did uh, Glenn Coleman as team dropped out. Ah, uh, mate. You smashed it. Well done, Stu. I hope, um, yeah, it was a tough, tough weekend, wasn't it? Yeah. But yeah, just swinging back to, you know, that, you know, when you've got a guide, you've got a team and around the, the personal responsibility side, I think something I, I kind of, we, we were chatting about is actually, it is really important as much as you've got a guide, as much as you've got a team around you, it's important to take the responsibility yourself, isn't it? And yeah, almost, you know, can I, um, you know, get out of this situation on my own if something goes south, you know? Can I look after myself? Do I also know what I, what I, need, what I need to do to, to, to succeed? Um, as Stuart's put there, you know, his mates drop out, but he, he won the Glencoe Challenge on his own. And, you know, they, I'm sure it's a bloody challenging day. You know, he, he took personal responsibility of that and did it himself. And I know that's not everyone. But yeah. I think something we found is, you know, on our trips, you know, they are guided, but it's not like you're holding their hand. You know, you, you, you've seen some articles around people who climb Everest and they're like, oh, yeah, don't want to climb it because they're pretty much holding your hand. Yeah. But it, I, I, I kind of on the other side of that. There's always a personal responsibility for anyone who goes on these adventures. And I think sometimes it's just worth, you know, you just want to remind yourself of that. And if you can, you know, upskill your knowledge about what you're doing, uh, obviously, if you're fitter, if you're um, you've got more experience. So getting out there and doing more on the mountains. It does give you that bit of confidence to have more personal responsibility. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it, it's something that we just need, you know, I know a lot of you on here, uh, you know, very experienced. You're, you're out hiking in the UK, doing things on your own, as well as with people. And it's, you know, it's great. And I, and I love that. Very proud of, of the whole community because you're always out and about. And, um, you know, I know different groups and things have, have formed. But, yeah, it is, it is important to remember that you can, you, you've got to look after yourself as well. And that comes down to, you know drinking water at altitude it yeah. goes down to getting the right pace um you know it comes down to right having the right equipment and making sure you do before you go having that responsibility so you know you're not leaving it to other people to do that um and you know you, you guided trip you looked after well but i tell you what it's something about it if you can look after yourself yeah no because you, you tend to help others then don't you? yeah no i 100 percent agree and just from your own sort of yeah comfortability factor you know you don't mm. want to really go onto a trip that you know you can't do on your own yeah, you know, um, obviously, when it comes to things like EDC, you'll have a guide. They'll be responsible for you, but you also want to know how capable you are. I think that comes down to the training, yes. getting out there and learning a lot about yourself. And actually, we're <laughs> doing solo trips and working your way up to these things does actually teach you a lot about yourself. You will become more self-sufficient. Yeah, but I think I've never wanted to say, for instance, if I was going to start, if I was going to go up Ben Nevis, I'd want to know, like, to within a good degree of certainty that yeah. if for whatever reason I ended up on my own, I wasn't just going to be stuck there. That I'd yeah. be able to get myself down safely. Um, and that is, I think, one, yeah, you're dead right. One of the most key points about solo trekking yeah. is you don't just want to wing it. You want to put in some of the work. You want to get some of the experience, whether it's like a training weekend, um, whether you teach yourself some skills and educate yourself before you go. Yeah. It makes a big difference. No, it does. And, and on taking having that independence, it can, it can help so many different facets of life too, you know? When you're more independent of things, you make independent decisions, of not relying on other people. It's 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 got so many different parts to it. Um, yeah. You know, not just about traveling. I don't know. You know, I I know this is pretty 
maybe a little bit different to what we normally talk about because we're, we're talking about you know um, duffel bags or mangle boutans or other stuff well you need those which, which are very important but i think sometimes we talk about the kind of um the kind of different stuff the stuff we don't talk about very often and sometimes that could be the most important thing um you know even though it might we might not think it might be the important thing i feel like i've um been a bit rude to the mangles lately and i think you i didn't paid, use I, them on I, the weekend I, I, and i think i paid for it you did um i got a blister for the first time wow in about 10 years bloody hell mate and uh, you wore the hawkers yeah I, uh, sorry to any hawker fans i know there. do you know what right <laughs> i realized that with the hawkers yeah, yeah i don't need them in boot form yeah I just, I'm wearing hawkers today, but they're uh, just, just but shoes. A lot of people on the on the event that were using them were using them as like yeah. trail running shoes yeah. and things like that. But the boots, not for me. Um, but talking about sort of independence and doing things on your own, we should yeah. probably touch on the Glencoe Challenge a little bit. Yeah. Um, because it was a big event over the weekend that we signed up for. Yes. Good bunch of ever trackers out there. Um, but well, we've done it before, haven't we? But we it's different every time. Yeah. I mean, these you conditions know. were the worst um there's ever been i think in the history of the glencoe challenge yeah particularly the bog section yeah, they said that didn't they the event organizers. The yeah, yeah it was tough man um but both but on times both times and particularly you were on your own yeah. i was on my own and you're kind of following a route that's sort of loosely defined yeah um and i think it can be quite easy i think and i, I certainly know this because i dropped out at 40 miles well, you dropped out. You were injured. Injured. Let's, let's, injured. let's clarify. Yeah, the bog. <laughs> the bog was a little bit too much yeah. for the knee. Um, again, having that experience, going through that bog, knowing that I was kind of hurting myself, yeah, was good. Yeah. I didn't panic. But particularly when I went back to the to the checkpoint, there was a couple of people there yeah. who were just overwhelmed. Yes, you know they spent yeah. too long on their own. Yeah. They were exhausted. They didn't have um, the confidence mm. to actually continue. <laughs> And I think that that showed to me a big sort of stark difference between mm. those that have kind of maybe put the prep in, are used to solo travel. Yeah. I've got that sense of mindset of independence. It, of independence. Yeah, yeah. And those that really do need a kind of, and, and obviously there's no right or wrong here. It's, you know, yeah, it, it's different courses, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, situational things and we always like to pluck a little bit of maybe golden nuggets that might help some people out there i mean yeah joel um joel gallimore put a deposit on killy last night for march he's going solo good man um yeah completely out of my comfort zone well excited exactly mate and well done for making the jump as well can't wait to have you on a trip mate um yeah absolutely fantastic and you know it and this we talk about the journey a lot don't we and and, and there's no sometimes we can get a bit competitive with people can't we and people who are maybe further along on that journey yeah than you are and the important thing is to be on the journey don't worry about which part of you are, you're at because we're we all joined it at a certain point and you know the experience will come the yeah. independence will come the getting comfortable you know out there will come um just enjoy that that journey um, yeah. as, as we go um and yeah it's it's just an interesting kind of scenario yeah. isn't it and we, we go back because i know we're talking about you know being trekking on your own i know what most of our trips you know, and nearly all of our trips, you know, 99% of them are group trips. You're not really on your own technically. And you've got a guide, you've got a porter. But, you know, you have your moments where you're on your own in terms of when you walk in, you get a bit of peace and quiet. Maybe the, the glacial valley opens up and, you know, you're there and you have a bit of thinking time, you know, because maybe you've been working nonstop for six months and this is your this is your break and you've got a bit of thinking time yeah but you're comfortable you're not you're not th you're not worried about it because you're on your own because you've got the confidence the independence that you're going to be okay um even though you may not be holding your guide's hand you know yeah well um Andrew scott said here yeah, so, yeah. oh you mean yeah, trekking with no guide no porter thought you just meant someone doing a solo trek but yeah. supported so they are the one kind of feeds into the other because we have a lot of people that perhaps want to go to everest base camp kilimanjaro yeah um but they don't want to go with. Yeah. it seems like too big a leap for them right yeah. at the beginning to sign on to a trip where you're going to fly <coughs> to a, the other corner of the world in a remote area on your own and you don't know anyone yeah. and you know psychologically you're going to be joining a group and you're going to have a guide but that first leap is yeah. into the unknown because you're, you're doing it on yourself it'll be you leaving your house on your own and what we're saying is that sometimes having the experience of doing treks back home yeah gaining you know 
you've gone out in the mountains and you've done a day on your own, or maybe you've done a training course, so you know you're equipped with certain skills, knowledge dispels fear. So if you've built that knowledge up and you want to do something like Kathmandu, uh, so EBC, it doesn't seem like such an extraordinary leap. And actually, most of the time, our customers and um, I know a couple of people have said this already in the comments. That yeah, they, yeah. They've booked on um, and actually made friends for life over there. Yeah, you and, do. And, you and, and guide, you know. Yeah, and learn to love the solo travel aspect yeah. of it. What we don't want is for someone whose life dream it is to kind of yeah. shed a tear on the summit of Kilimanjaro, but not do it because they don't have someone they know from home to go yeah. with them. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, we, I've, I've been there. Um, you know, in terms of oh, you know, I, I fancy that and want to go on my own. But uh, so I want to go with friends, but um, you know, there's no one to go with. Um, and then sometimes I'm like, bugger it, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm just gonna get out there and and we'll work it out, you know. Uh, hey, Des Lally is Des be on our oh, podcast legend, very yeah. very soon. Des was uh, great enough to come to the office. Um, oh, I've got about two weeks ago now, Des. Um, yeah, hopefully you've. Uh, I'm sure he's had a, a dip or two in some cold water since we've last uh, caught up. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining oh, the live. Great guy, Des. He did. Um... Penavan 365, which is yeah. Penavan every day for a year, it's 365 nuts. ascents in one year. Also did 24 hours of rugby on the summit of Penavan. 28, um, I think it was 28. Was it was 28 hours, yeah, we, was it? Kept going. Yeah, knowing him, it would be <laughs> more than 24. But yeah, um, we did a podcast with Des, oh, so we look me. forward to that one. Um, yeah, I remember Sophie Her said that, um, yeah. you know, she, I remember she was solo on the trip. Yeah, she was, exactly, which is a leap, you know, and, and well done. Well, done if I remember well done. rightly, I think, this is, um, I'll use Sophie as an example. Yeah, she yeah. likes it a lot. Um, <laughs> I know she went out there on her own, and I think she, you know, yeah. struggled a little bit with the altitude, yeah. gritted through, got to base camp, come back. And I guarantee that if we were to able to ask her now, maybe she can answer, that she felt so much more confident to go and do another trip now. Um, yeah. Having done EBC and pitching yourself against adversity, coming up strong. And what it does for you. What it does for you, yeah, because yeah. it really does. And it inspires the confidence. And you don't. Yeah. It, it really has changed my life, I think, doing lots of trips and things like that yeah. and having big moments when I'm on my own. Because obviously, I, I left Andy on his own on the weekend. For the how worst, could you, how for could the, you do for that the, to for, me? The, for the worst <laughs> half? Of, well, it's funny, the Glencoe. Um, yeah. The first half is the most difficult mm. physically, the second half is the most difficult mentally. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I would rather struggle physically mm. because the mental aspect of it, you once, once this checks out, the yeah. body doesn't work anymore. No, it was. And, um, it was because I, I was thinking about things. Like, you know, when we were thinking about the, the live today and, and and things about okay, what can what can we pull from the weekend? And certainly, yeah, you know, okay, there was a situation that happened, and you know, you know, Dave needs to look after his body, and he made the right decision. And what we'll touch on that in a minute because I think um, um, some other trackers put some good comments about like making the like the hardest decisions. Yeah, like, is is a, is a really good thing um you know and you did you made the right decision because you know you gotta look after your body thinking ahead to all those those challenges yeah but yeah you, you can't get away from it then you know you got like six hours then in your own head you know essentially um you know you, you say hello to other people and um whatever but you are you are on your own but i'm kind of lucky that i've got that experience and i don't mind going three hours in the rain and you know i can look after myself um you know that you can always get lucky of course but i'm i'm kind of confident enough to look after myself but we were thinking about that then for this, you know, getting to that stage makes it so, so much more enjoyable because you haven't got that anxiety around it. You can just crack on and do what you got to do. Um, and then you get to the end and, and then Dave's at the end giving me a beer. So, yeah, yeah. which was awesome. Well, yeah, that honestly, was I was like, I came around, I was knackered. I got to be honest. I'd, I'd stupidly done a six mile hike the day before um, and I beasted it. I think we we're going to uh, Spud, who's um, uh, Doug, who's, who's on here. Douglas Smith. Um, yeah, we did a hike before, and I don't think that helped because that was six miles. And then six miles from the end of the Glencoe Challenge was when I was like, <sighs> my legs kind of were struggling, my yeah. hamstrings were tight, and I was like, wow, shouldn't have done that yesterday. Um, but yeah, so it's all interesting stuff, this, isn't it? And again, I know this is different to what we normally talk about, um, but I think it's really important and, and really, really important for anyone that's looking at um you know, wanting to do trekking. Because yeah. if you are on your own, it shouldn't be a blocker, you know, and you're never on your own. I, look, we looked at some stats, actually, and uh, it literally over 50%, I think it was more towards 55% of everyone that books on with Evertrek is actually a solo trekker, yeah. believe it or not, um, which is quite nuts, isn't it? So 
if you think you're booking and you're going solo and you think you're on your own, well, there we are. You're part of that fifty-five percent. You know, you're the majority. Yeah, <laughs> technically, well, you know <laughs> exactly. Like... Yeah, and you know, I see there's some conversation going on in the comments, and yeah, when we talk about solo travel, mm. um, you know, yeah, there is that thing where some people might be kind of purist and say, well, you know, solo travel means no guide, no porter, doing it on your own, and to a degree, that's correct. But at the same time, booking onto a trek, yeah. if you've had a dream to, if you've never, you know, done anything like that before. You've never gone to Kathmandu on your own to meet a load of random strangers, to trek in a part of the world that can be dangerous. Mm. That is just as daunting. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's where what we're talking about, you know, that aspect of it, being having the courage yeah. to sign on, to fly out, to go and meet people, to go into a part of the world that can be dangerous, where you might get sick, where you might get injured, um, and pitching yourself against those circumstances. That's yeah. the solo travel aspect of it. Obviously, there are those people that go out completely on their own, unguided. Yeah. But we wouldn't recommend that for anyone that hasn't got a lot of experience. Yeah, because you need to know a great deal about you know the mountains and things like that. <clears throat> Not just mindset and personal safety, but there's a lot that goes into the terrain, the equipment, all of that sort of stuff to keep yourself safe. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Just reading some comments as well. So it's good. It's always good to get in the, was it Shona's on here um uh yeah exactly and just reading what shown has gone when some people do book on and they're like if i book on with another group of people you know um and yeah it's you're, you're trying to sorry where's your um where's it gone really big deal yeah it can be overwhelming but you know sometimes then you you make friends with that group you, you almost become part of that group as well um and it's like what we've we've tried to you know do from the beginning with with evertrek yeah is to make it a community because then you've got lots of these different people wanting to go on the go on these things on their own but then once you're part of a community and you've got other people to kind of bounce ideas off catch up with you know uh just getting out there and and, and maybe doing adventures together then you're net you're not on your own and that's because then you know for them from the community side and that's what we've always you know hopefully try to create and you know it's, it's i suppose the, the fruits of, of that are, are here i mean you know we've obviously grown quite a bit over the last few years but we still got some some of our ever trekker legends here yeah. <laughs> uh lucy how are you doing lucy um yeah but and kate has put as well 100 felt safe couldn't imagine it without ever trekker the guys i'll always be thankful well kate it was an absolute pleasure to trek with you back in 2019 yep. um yeah we went past ben nevis on the weekend didn't we and um uh, oh, dave was reliving really the story when you were there yeah um, yeah well kate did ben nevis solo yeah exactly you know exactly. after um, doing base camp and i bet you know, I mean, Kate, before you went to base camp, would you have, you know, where, where would you have been at in terms of taking on Ben Nevis on your own? Yeah, it's very, it is very confidence inspiring having done that. Yeah. Um, yeah, talking about Ben Nevis, that was a that was a brutal day that was because of the heat. You know. Yeah. It was that was a, a good, that was a good 10, 11 hour day. We did the CMD, but it yeah. was so hot that was absolutely insane. We had the opposite problem on the in this weekend. We nearly needed gills. It was so wet. <laughs> but um, I think I still got them. I still yeah, got them. I might go for a swim. It was a great challenge. I think we're gonna. I don't know if we're gonna do it next year. We haven't decided well, yet. Our... I think we're probably not gonna do it next year. I... Three times and done for me. I know um, Spud, who's on here. I call him Spud. Uh, he's Doug on here, but um, Spud is 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 uh, is, is, is he's known as um, by his mates. And uh, yeah, he he's done it six times, and he's the record holder actually uh, from the, since they started that event. Most like attempts seven eight years ago. Um, but yeah, three and done for me. Yeah, just because. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 hard. There's so much more of Scotland to see, but you know, I'll, I'll always go back to Glencoe. There's so many Munros there, and yeah, but the Glencoe challenge as, as, as it is, um, yeah, maybe, maybe it's done, but you never know. We're two days post it, post doing it, you never know. Give me a week, then ask me, maybe, maybe ask me on next yeah. week's tuning. I think it's 1.5 and done for me, yeah, <laughs> yeah, as Doug said, it is, but yeah. I'm done too, <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it is great, but there's so much, great, more, there's yeah. so much more to do up in, yeah. um, in that neck of the woods. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah we can go up there get a good group together and go climb some own rows or mm. do some passes or something like that yeah yeah an amazing trip but um yeah just um whilst we're here as well um do ask some questions uh just so me and dave um i got got some questions to answer guys that's what we're here for as well um yeah because we still got about another 30 35 minutes it doesn't have to be about solo trekking um i know a lot of people who have just booked in um was talking about booking in just a quick reminder this is the last day if you joined our recent competition um last day to, to use um if you've got any uh, prizes to use um any discounts then do get yourself um booked in 
um yeah we'd obviously love to to help you on that journey yeah um i know a lot of people have um recently i know it's been a, been a busy couple of, a couple of days for the team um and yeah if there's anything we can do to assist that any questions you've got then do let us know um but definitely get uh, looking at the dates on the website yeah um and, and have a little look at those there is the knowledge center as well if you've got any specifics but yeah if you're on here now great if you're watching this non-live and we don't ask the question that you because i know what we, we looking at the um the stats over the last couple of years pretty nuts actually 80 percent of people who watch this actually watch it non-live which uh, you know i, I know yeah. life hello to the 80 percent yeah um obviously it's great to have uh, all the people who are live and on here as well because uh, you're about you guys you know we wouldn't have any of these conversations we'd that just happen. be talking to each other <laughs> um no but it was actually awesome but um yeah if you're watching it non-live um and there are specific questions you want then don't forget to you know maybe look at the previous lives we, we've done what, 110 now um different tuesdays um about doing this don't forget mountain life podcast is it 110 yeah i think so it was 108 yes yeah, 110th episode it only feels like 108 to me <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well no. i haven't been here for all 110 i think you're, yeah, you you smashed it mate. you've done probably no i i, I've I missed, think you missed one right i think i've missed one yeah yeah but that's amazing one that i didn't do i know well, clearly mate, I more holidays than you you know what like, <laughs> mate, i just yeah you know shattered my leg like a dry breadstick but i'll still tune in <laughs> but um you done well you yeah done no well. it's really good one thing actually i think we haven't touched on that is probably yeah. really good on, yeah. um because there's bound to be people listening yeah um who have got this concern and i know yeah. that because it's probably one of the top five most asked questions we get which is they want to go on their own they want to go um but they're really worried about being the slowest in the group yeah it's good. Um, a good question there, yeah. and it's it's a it's a worry that I really have to give a lot of respect to because yeah. so many people have it. No one wants to be the person that lets the rest of the group down, yeah. that holds everyone up, that be the is the reason that people can't you know do the trip that they wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and I totally get it, and I 100% you know sympathise with that. What I want to do now is you know give a little bit of knowledge to dispel that fear. Yeah. Um, it really is not a factor. It's not something we consider yeah. when we take people onto our trips. Is how fast they can trek. If anything, we want people to be able to trek. It's it's almost like you know you want to you you want to win at the slowest speed possible. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so you want to get to every space camp. You want to be successful, but you want to get there at the slowest pace you can manage while still you know completing each day, because pace is a tool. You know, the same as hydration. Yeah. The same as your physical training. The same as your mindset. The pace is a big factor, and I know from experience that i've been on treks with people who are incredibly fit and yeah. you as well mm -hmm. who are like um you know triathletes you know some of the fittest people we've ever worked with yeah and but that competitive mindset makes them push on day one yeah push on day two push on day three when the altitude isn't so severe as soon as they get to day six seven and eight the altitude remembers <laughs> and i say it comes back and, and i it, remember your pace at the beginning. yeah and it, yeah. and it and it and you know and all of a sudden then you haven't had that time to acclimatize yeah. and one of the things that i say to people that are super slow is that it takes eight days to reach Everest base camp if you're an hour or two hours behind the person who arrived first well that's two hours a day that you can have yeah, yeah. extra to adjust to the Could altitude be over like 12 14 hours yeah in the end right so yeah. you do it so you're two hours behind every, behind you know speedy gonzalez every day up to base camp well that's what 16 hours that you've had to adjust to altitude that they haven't had yeah. and i always say that if you don't think that can make a difference try and do a full day's hike with no sleep you'll see what eight hours can do oh. <laughs> you know um, tell me about it dave yeah <laughs> yeah but, uh, good luck to all those that are booked on to killy yeah. <laughs> no no some great comments coming in as well i think lucy um i know you've covered this previous live i missed it uh people generally get their visa at uh kilimanjaro airport or um previous to going out to climb killy um yeah i think you're, you're carrying on aren't you hoping I'm, i can make it off the mountain um no you will lucy you're gonna have an awesome time um most people do it before now uh i mm. think with especially the last couple of years because there's been you know not a lot of people going over there but beforehand um like we've done it turned up and a lot of ever trekkers turn up and do it. it does take sometimes you know an hour maybe two if it's really busy maybe three yeah so do factor that in um ideally it's good to get it done before just because it's a bit more streamlined um yeah but especially if you go to multiple um multiple countries that might be a bit difficult if you can though mate i'd say it saves you you know it, you, you're wasting beer time uh, <laughs> you know if you want to if you want to drink before you before you head off 
Um, yeah, so it's completely up to you. But I, I, I reckon we recommend doing it uh, before if you can. Yeah, and definitely. The last thing you want to do when you land, yeah, is have a two to three to four hour wait. Yeah, in, in a queue. In, I know you're like, queue, I just want to get there. You know, boiling yeah. hot. In fact, it's part of the journey, right? I went to um, first time I ever went to Everest Base Camp. I didn't. I got my visa on arrival. Yeah, and it was a massive queue, and me and my friend Billy were queuing um, for forty five minutes. I was about four from the front, but I'd held in a toilet break <laughs> for so long <laughs> really? that I said to Billy, like, Look, Bloody, I can't yeah. do it, mate. I can't, I can't stay here. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I misjudged it horribly. Save my spot. Uh, I <laughs> Is that to, it? Well, Is no, it? no, because I had to run to go to the toilet. By the time wow. I come back, Billy's been served. Yeah. I had to join the queue again for another 45 minutes. <laughs> it was horrific. <laughs> well, but, um, it's better than uh, destroying the queue. Yeah, I noticed uh, uh, you Heather, she's on here as well. Well, oh, hey, hey, Heather. She's done a couple of trips solo, solo this year as well. Yeah, really well. Loves it. And um, it's quite it's quite interesting looking look to um, and, and this is a tactic I use as well. I think so. If you put I was super slow, mostly at the back and taking loads of pictures. But whenever I'm hiking with someone else, even in the UK, especially Spud, who's on here um, and he's trying to, you know, he's going quite quick. And, you know, I, 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 quite, I take it easy. I'm you know, a bit more chilled. Um, there's always a picture to take if you need a breather. Exactly. It's a great, great mm. way to slow down. And especially if you go into these places, you know, when you've been planning it for such a long time. Why rush? You know, there's no need to rush. And as Dave said, you know, it, if, if that is something that, you know, flip back to what you were talking about, about that question that comes up, what happens if I'm the slowest? Well, if you are the slowest, I tell you what, you're going to be the best acclimatised. Yeah. <laughs> or at least have the chance to be the best acclimatised, making sure you're drinking enough, right? Yeah. Again, we go back to personal responsibility. Make sure you're drinking enough water. Um, the guides will keep reminding you, but, you know, like I said, if you can do that without slashing. But yeah, same with speed. And you know what, when it comes to, you know, like groups, especially on Killy, it doesn't really happen because of where you're at and, and the type of journey it is. The group tends to stay together. Um, and, you know, you do, you do go as slow as the slowest person, you know, because at the end of the day, if someone's got to stop, we'll wait. Yeah. Base camp is a bit different because you've got it's such a, because you're journeying through a landscape and we've got a lot more like assistant guides. Sometimes the group can kind of splinter off a little bit. Um, you know, I've been with trips before and, um, some people have got there, like like Dave said, you know, an hour or two before other people. Like that, you know, it, it can spit off that much. You know, obviously, you'd always be be taken care of um, with the assistant guides. But the people who are with the slowest tend to have the best time. You know? Yeah. So just 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 remind that be 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 that like I think we put there. Be that tortoise. Relax. Enjoy it. Why rush? Try and leave that competitiveness back home. Um, well, you know, like, if you can. It's like being on the back of the bus, mate. Yeah, exactly. Everyone has more fun on the back of the bus, you know. You don't want to be one of Is those that people. Is that it was on the yeah. to high school? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, you don't want to be the one sat at the front next to the bus driver. But um, exactly. yeah, no, it is really great. And you know, I remember on the bog on the Glencoe Challenge, I took loads of opportunities to stop, yeah. not to take pictures, but for like a, just a good swear break. <laughs> um, yeah, just, just to just to just let out some expletives, you know, get get pretty annoyed with it. Exactly, it really helped me. <laughs> yeah, Andrew but, Scott's on here as well uh danny bc eight day eight days loads of time definitely definitely we've um i think obviously andrew mentions that eight days eight days uh, eight days up three down um yeah it's two acclimatization days uh in there in there it used to be called rest days but we don't rest yeah we like to keep active make sure the body's working hard at altitude just because you acclimatize better um but yeah if you it, honestly there's it's very very um lack of pressure in terms of forcing you onwards I think that's one thing we've we've learned um and i suppose we're very proud of is that the guides we've got are you know the best in the business mm -hmm. and you know they they certainly know that the guides that rush you up there they don't work for us you know we it because we get feedback and say okay this guy's rushing me up we, we wouldn't really work with that guide yeah we've we, we recruit really really good guides yeah we always like to because we we like to promote um from the bottom generally the kind of culture in the pool is you know you work as a porter maybe as a kid say kid you know say 15 to 20 years old they're really good then they'll go to assistant guy they'll try and learn the language and learn english and then if they're really good and they want to become full guides they can yeah so sometimes you know we do like to trial and bring in good people good assistant guides and put them as guides and you know we like to you know we don't throw them in the deep end you know we, we tend to look at their experience and do a few small groups first and then you know, if they want to become full ever track guys, you know, they've got to be really good. Yeah. But yeah, one of the one of the big ones is that we don't rush people because altitude is is you know it can be dangerous. No. Um, and rushing people is dangerous. Yeah. No. I mean, we one one of the biggest complaints yeah. that we've I've heard from people that have gone to base camp 
not with us. Um, you know, most of the time, how'd you get on? Yeah, we had a wonderful time. But if they ever give me any like feedback that they say, oh, I, I, yeah, my guy felt like we were being rushed and felt like I was chasing him up the hill. Um, that's the one that, you know, we don't, yeah. um, you know, we, we're not interested in a trip like that. Our trip, again, is about being successful. That's priority yeah. one. We want to get people to get to where they booked. Um, exactly. Hey, Marky V. Yes, I did, mate. And um, yeah, we've um, you know taken it on board and done some stuff with uh, the Annapurna region. So that's awesome. Yes, I um, think Mark went. Yeah, Mark went to Annapurna, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. It's definitely with. There's been a lot of things happening with the roads, and it can, can cause definitely some delays. But yeah, um, Mark, hundred percent, mate. That was great, especially with the using the plane instead of the, the bus. Yeah, hundred percent. That's a great idea um yeah it's been a been a busy one um but yeah thanks for thanks for your feedback mate yeah uh, always always helps um but right yeah any any questions guys do throw them in just so we can um take them on especially if it's around anything trip specific uh obviously if it's around solo trekking great if any of you are thinking about going but there's something that's on your mind um you know do throw them in because that's you know that's what we're here for yeah. we want to make sure i mean we do these tuesday tune-ins especially since the beginning just to try and you know um make sure that you've got those questions answered so you're not worrying about it yeah um or if you have got any worries then then we can talk about them um obviously if you don't want to share them publicly do send them in um you know we can we can answer those questions um you know personally so you know if there's anything specific especially if it's around anything to do with health um maybe you've gone on a trek with another company and it hasn't worked out and you've got some some things you want to talk about um yeah yeah don't forget to hit us up uh, info at evertrek.co.uk um or the little messenger on the website and we can you know we can make sure then we get that um uh, yeah that's all it but yeah love annapurna be the base camp done the circuit god jan you've been you've been out there mate yeah you were uh, annapurna and the circuit which one was your favorite i'm guessing the circuit because it was longer i'm guessing so i think she did base camp first and then went back and thought i want to spend more time do, now i'm going to do, do the, the circuit, circuit. So that's a great way but to yeah. do it I mean, um, one of the things I suppose we can talk about, we talked yeah, about yeah. like um, personal responsibility and, yeah. and looking after yourself. I think yeah. we should probably recount in some detail what, you know, our trip to um, to Glencoe, why and yeah. leaving you on your own, what it was like for you then in the last, okay. in the, yeah, in the, yeah, yeah. In, in the back good. nine. Yeah, yeah. Um, little golfing reference for you there, Andrew. Oh, and, um, done well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> mate, you know, I was um, starving, mate. When's tea time? But, uh, <laughs> nice. And, um, let's, uh, well, yeah, so we went up there and... Yeah. Um, it was really really tough conditions for us on the on there and you all start at the same time and yeah. you just kind of go off um and then you get to this point after the checkpoint the first checkpoint which is i think five odd miles yeah where there's then the bog and the bog stretches out for what seems like a hundred years <laughs> and it's not really a defined path for me to be so you've got to kind of find your own way yeah and it was really it's time consuming and and energy sapping yeah is what it was i think and as we were going through there i decided that that was absolutely hammering down with rain. There was no point trying to stay dry. Yeah. Um, trying to be clever with it was just taking more time. So I'm just going to go as the crow flies, no matter what was in front of me. And it worked. And I got through the bog relatively quickly. One thing that did happen, though, was I kept talking my knee over and over again. Because both legs, every step would go down, would go down, would go down. You have to pull your leg up. Um, and you think you're doing that for over an hour um and then yeah. by the time we got you know to the devil staircase which is what greets you after the bog which is a lovely treat um it sounds saw, ominous as well doesn't it yeah. the devil's staircase so, why i don't think it was that bad but it, no no because we start halfway up it really yeah, yeah. so you, you know you, you think oh my god this is steep but then you, you're at the top before you know yeah. it so it's not that bad but luckily i caught up with andy you kind of held back when you knew i was kind of uh, approaching and we did the, the staircase together it was okay and then on the way down then to kinlock leaven I put my knee out to take a step and uh, normally when you do that your knee will bend when you take your next step but my it didn't yeah so the next thing you know i was like you know i was on the concrete but then you know it's okay seemed all right had lunch started off did about another little bit up into the woods and then yeah. i decided that as much as i'd like a second medal um i'd already done the challenge and what was more important to me is like the future health you know exactly like and that again that comes from i think doing trips and stuff like that and um yeah and and what, what, you will never be able to read that the, but that, well, that, that does say independence yeah that is not <laughs> independence there that i got ind and then what's that bit there it's um it's it's written pretty yeah right. and yeah that that <laughs> but you did because you had independence yeah. to make your own decisions know when to quit exactly yeah because 
everyone around you will encourage you and that's the right thing to do because yeah. a lot of time but I know myself now I know my own mind and I know what I'm capable of and I also know when is best to call it quits yeah this comes into you know comes into effect a lot when you're in the <coughs> mountains is and it's not just your physical health sometimes it can be weather sometimes it can be you know the terrain can be just too yeah. unstable um and this time it was it was me and I just sat there and I, I sat for about well, stood for about five minutes chatting to Andy in the rain and I just decided I'd rather be able to continue training, continue walking, continue riding my bike after today yes. rather than push myself another 13 miles and then perhaps be laid up for a little while. So and there's, I, a, there's a backstory as well. And, and, and I know mo maybe 50 percent of people on the live will know, but the other 50 percent, maybe not so that Dave had a ACL replacement last year. It was just under this time last year. Oh, yeah. Over. Yeah. So, well, you know, so that your knee yeah. isn't exactly 100 percent. Right? Yeah. Well, this time a year ago, I couldn't walk really yeah. without um, the aid of crutches. Um, and then a few months before that, it was, you know, mm. to, to get around anywhere for any length of time, it was a, it was a wheelchair because yeah. of the damage. But yeah, I had an ACL reconstruction, had a knee fracture, had an MCL tear. And what was causing the problem on the weekend, I think, yeah. was um, all the cartilage in my knee, which is now floating and gets locked in, in the joint when it's been hassled. Yeah. Anyway, decided, yeah, you know, that I need to make, be able to make an independent decision about what's best for me. Yeah. Talked it through with Andy, handed over my jelly beans headed back down and nabbed your watch as nabbed well. my watch yeah nice. so you could see six yeah days. well it helps because you can look you can look at it and um you know what was, you know what was I had really, I left you know what was really annoying it's nice watch. look a midgy bike Ooh. where my watch strap would be the the moment i gave my watch away they went straight <laughs> for where it was but um yeah so i turned back and i went back down then and um you know went went back down to the beginning mm. but at that point then obviously andy was promoted to solo trekker yeah and i didn't see you again for another four odd hours yeah um until I until met you back at the end until i crawled through the, you were a uh, different man when i left you mate you were you were all right like when i, I was thinking you I hit a wall i was thinking what was that six from the end? but no but it was um shona said the same thing that yeah. after the conditions of that day and the weather which you you know when you're walking for that length of time yeah. and that distance it makes the weather can play play its hand and i think the last six miles were um that was a test of your metal right no, it was. I mean, it, it, they, they certainly, I, you know, I leaned on experience. Um, I'm you know, going to say your pulls. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't actually stop that much. Yeah. I, you know, I, I needed a couple of peas, you know. Um, I needed to stop for toilet. Uh, but yeah, other than that, really, it was just checkpoints. Yeah. And you do as you're going through. And I, I know a lot of um, ever trekkers are thinking of going up there next year. I highly recommend it. it and the, the good thing to think about, though, is that no day in on Everest Base Camp no day on Killy really summit night comes close to it is as tough on your body essentially as that as that day so i think if you can do that imagine what you can do right yeah obviously you know all of our trips are altitude so your know, altitude is different and that's a different challenge but physically on the legs yeah i think the only thing that comes close to it on on the kind of you know, on some of the classic trips really it probably is the tube cow two cow weekender because you're doing so much up and down in in a in a, in a quite a condensed um time period so yeah just think about that guys if you if you can do the glencoe challenge i can prove to yourself that you can do so much more um, yeah you know just just from you know um just from our experience but yeah going back to obviously i was on my own and you know because i trek a lot on my own um in, in terms of my training you know I've, I've done a lot of mountain training navigation i'm comfortable but there's still that you know sometimes you like to have a bit of banter a bit of a uh, bit of a laugh, you know, especially when you're with a mate and, you know, you want to you want to have fun. I mean, you know, I obviously chat to people on the way, but yeah, certainly when you're in your own mind, you, you've got to entertain yourself. Um, there's certain things you do just to get get through. But when, especially when it's lashing down, you're like, yeah. right, I, I got Rosie now and she wants some TikTok content. I'm going to have to do some videos. So, <laughs> so yeah. There might be some coming out. You never know. I'll give it to Rosie and she'll create it. And you never know, there might be some silly videos of me on TikTok. Um, to be honest, because i had i knew i wanted to try and get sub 10 hours i didn't um I, w I needed to go at least like three miles an hour which is hard for 26 miles so i was nailing it um on the if you ever done the west highland way um the the trip from or the the part from kinloch leven to um uh, down to fort william that uh, sort of drops down into glen nevis that bit i was trying to cover it's, it's relatively flat hard on the shins because it's quite hard ground um, and then, and then basically, then you've got the bogs, and then you've got di different parts. The 
the bad bog is in the first part mm. and then yeah so you, you try to you try to give yourself little challenges and it, you, you could use that on a trip like for instance um sometimes you know if you want to entertain yourself um and especially if you're on um, you know and, and it feels like a bit monotonous try counting to a certain amount and then have a break if you want if it's tough like for instance i was counting to 100 you know and every time i count to 100 i give myself like a 10 second stop mm. so it's a challenge then if you're feeling hard and an altitude 100 steps is quite is a bit a bit hard maybe lower it down to like 20 or 30 but imagine you're going up some steep incline and you've got that challenge to reach 20 steps or a challenge to reach 30 steps and then when you do it you, you feel good you know I've, i think it's, it's, there's a lot of science around this so you know around dopamine around when you succeed at anything it gives you you know there's a chemical that gets produced and every time you set those goals and beat those goals it makes you feel good it mm. gives you a lift so and you know and it did it does um you know I, I purposely do that because i know it chemically helps and i know my mind is pretty good so i'm able to, to keep it keep happy even when you've three hours drenched a little bit of chafing sore feet sure you know sore after going doing anything and next thing you know you hit the next i had a slightly yeah. different approach getting me through the bog <laughs> Uh, 20 different swear words start again. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah, 20 different that's, that's swear words do, start again. But you'd be surprised because the gaps between swear words after you've done about four is or five is, is, is quite, you've got to get quite creative 20 with it. 20 swear words. Yeah, it's quite interesting. I have to watch, man, because there's some creative swear words that you, you don't necessarily want to let people know. Yeah. Unless, you know. Yeah, well, anyone that was walking friends. around me in the bog would have been. Um, but then to be fair, I think if you you could hear it on the wind in the bog, like it was just a tirade of foul language. But to be honest, I look back at it. I keep talking about the bog. It was the toughest part of the it's, bit. It but was, look at yeah, it; it's yeah. the bit that I'm talking about the most. Why not get bogged down? Ah, uh, no, it's all right. Mate. It's, all, it's all right, mate. And, um, <laughs> I'm trying to. I, no, that was it. Too long. You got you know. That's uh, you, the one thing. Went, that, then, yeah, uh, it was one thing that me and Andy do is um, it keeps us occupied in a, and and also kind of drives us a bit mad. Is yeah. you get locked into a pun war. <laughs> so like we'll be walking along and um, we'll see something and it'll be like pun 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 yeah. pun and it, it, it is an amusing and then you'll just tell us both the bugger off because <laughs> yeah we're like yeah <laughs> i mean it was quite funny when um me and steve were walking behind zach on the way back from Toothcal. yeah and um, we could see that he was struggling a little bit and we, we were trying to get him to talk to us and um i i think he fantasized about pushing us off the cliff <laughs> at one at one point <laughs> That bog was a nightmare. It was, Paula. It was. It was great. Um, but yeah, it's 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 definitely um, definitely a challenge. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just read it. Uh, do you do uh, TikTok challenges, Leah? Um, we haven't yet. I got to be honest. Like I haven't really. I'm, I've started using it now, and I don't want to say everyone get on TikTok. You know, it's not for everyone. Um, you know, it can certainly consume a lot of time. So I don't really watch too much on there. Um, but basically, we 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 are you know trying to you know try different things um yeah if you've got anything that you think uh, we can do a tiktok challenge send over leah we'll do it you know us um i'll have to download we'll like the a app. challenge yeah download it mate we should have done some um <laughs> some challenge in the bog on tiktok that would have yeah. been, that would have been brilliant right um but yeah. tiktok is 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 pretty good app. well who went deepest i think up with the i think it was I've me seen some I... people and they're like especially some you know so, so smaller girls who were doing it and they were like up to their hips almost you see like, wow. it'd, it'd be an interesting competition between me and you because i'm taller yeah. but i'm also heavier so the shorter person doesn't have that much length before they get up to yeah. their hip so yeah. technically i would be better but then i'm heavier so it, it it might balance it out yeah but um yeah the bog was tough it, it was, was um it was quite tough right that's gonna be the last uh, that's the last time i mentioned the bog mention what tried yeah <laughs> the marshes the dead marshes <laughs> it? brilliant brilliant dancing yeah just going through some of the, the comments uh one thing i do remember the west highland way was chafing we mugged the guy with a talc <laughs> brilliant jan i'm not surprised because i've not done the full uh, west highland way i we um on the way back we drove pretty much you know all the way down past loch lomond and the west highland way looks fantastic especially if you, if you do a multi-day trekking right because i mean mm. that's perfect if you go into like base camp um yeah i highly recommend i mean i've heard really good things about it yeah um but yeah how many days did you do it over jan was it i know people do over five days and some do it over was it like eight or nine um you know depending on the distances but yeah what, what how long did you do it over um yeah obviously you know if you are chafing and you mug the guy with the talc, you're usually the guy with the talc you didn't have it this weekend 
No, I, I tried a new one. You tried a new one, didn't you? A new one, which yeah. I had to look the other way as he was using. Put it that way. Well, yeah, well, you know, it's it's um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's an intimate job. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I tried a new one, but um, tough and Vaseline, I think, is the best one. Definitely. But yeah, we could see a lot of um, yeah, a lot of comments about the Annapurna region. It's making it's forcing its way through Annapurna. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So um, yeah, we asked that into um, I mean, we've done that drive, haven't we? From um, yeah, from I liked it to be honest. I enjoyed the drive because. Yeah. To me, it's all part of the adventure. I mean, it is a long drive and it is bumpy. Yeah. And perhaps I would have liked it to have been an hour or two shorter. Yes. Um, but for me, it's just all it's it's just all part of it. You know, I don't go on those trips to be overly comfortable. I go to kind of like push my boundaries and I got yeah. to see other parts of the country. But we have, I think we're gonna start introducing the flight back. Yeah, instead um, of the drive. I mean, we've like I said, we've done the drive, we know it's long, it can certainly sometimes take longer than but it can. I know Marky V, it took, took like nine odd hours, which is nuts. Um, you know, I've done it in just under, just under seven before. Six and a half hours, I think it was. And that was with a couple of stops. But yeah, it, it can, you know, especially with the road at certain times of year, it can be worse than others. But yeah, uh, the but reason, the reason why that. we did initially choose the drive was mm. because when you introduce a flight anywhere um, in Nepal, mm. especially like a domestic flight, yeah, you invite into your plan the possibility of delays and cancellations yeah the same issues you have with the Lukla flights Annapurna was always a relatively safe bet mm. but when you come back we need to have the car there for you yeah. in order for that to be a backup option otherwise you end up kind of in this awkward delay so we do the best we can but I think we'll move we'll move the flights from there yeah on. I think it's definitely going to be an option um you know because I think with the Annapurna region it's definitely a lot quieter than the Everest region um you know not as many trekkers go there um, which is is nuts because it's you know scenic wise just as beautiful really if not more beautiful some people say yeah um, yeah but you know the average region is obviously Everest Base Camp is a big tick off off the list um, but yeah and but Annapurna for us is growing big time we've got some good groups yeah um, you know it's great to have customers out there and yeah it's it's definitely on on these kind of things it's good to to kind of have little bits of feedback that we can always because it, it was the same with Base Camp very early days you know we had. Um, some feedback on specific things which we made tweaks and we now know that um you know it's obviously works yeah um but no no it's been great <clears throat> i hope you know just just sort of thinking about you know what we go just flipping back now to what we what we started around sort of independence you know solo go, going on your own um you know and, and taking a personal responsibility we hope that's been useful today because you know it's it's, it's something that we we wanted to talk about but you're always like thinking okay how, how can we approach that what's the best way yeah because we don't want to come across and you know sound like we're preaching you know and like like you should do this you should do this we, we always you know like to leave it out there and people make their own decisions but just from just from experience and, and seeing which ever trekkers you know do well and the ones that are kind of uh, maybe might struggle a little bit um certainly the ones that have got a little bit more experience but definitely the ones who can take personal responsibility can you know listen to advice take it on board and use it um you know because that's what we like to do is, is, yeah. is pass on what works just to, to make your journey easier um yeah and i hope that's been useful today yeah. andrew asked a good question um do you do so look uh do you have manazoo circuit on your itinerary yeah we've been looking at it for a while haven't we manazoo? yeah it's on the agenda it's um, um it's with with a few others in the pool where we're, we're, yeah we're putting it in place it's one of them where everyone always says is, what about this? What about this? And yeah, there's almost there's an infinite and, number, but yeah, yeah 100% Manaslu is one we're interested in, yeah. along with stuff in the Kanchenjunga region as well. Yeah, um, yeah that's going to be an awesome one, quite yeah. remote. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it just obviously, you know, it takes time to, to build these things correctly. Yeah. Um, in order to have the trips that we do, that we get such awesome feedback from, there's a lot of sort of, you know, detail that goes into the mix rather than just sending people out there. Um, but yeah, 100% that's going to happen. I saw Jan ask, what was the other one talking about talc? I've got a picture for you. It's called Body Glide. So that's the one I used. It's mainly like a cycling one. Nice. Um, but it's like the original, it's it's called, they well. call itself the original anti-chafing balm. <laughs> and um, I'll be honest, it was pretty good. Yeah, it's it's not very um, sticky or greasy. Yeah. You know, so you put it on, you don't really realize you've got it on. But um, I, uh, let's just say I didn't have many symptoms. Yeah, exactly. I used um, off a training weekend because I used to suffer with chaf chafing quite bad. I started using um, Vaseline just on the insides, you know, where it gets a bit sore normally, just so there was less friction. And yeah, it works a treat. So yeah, just just to kind of pass on a little bit of something that works. 
um, especially when it's wet, because when it's wet, when your body gets wet and you know it can start rubbing, mm. oof, we've seen some bad chafing injuries over the years. Um, yeah, it's not nice, especially when you put on a pair of jeans or put a put a pants or knickers and it's a bit rubbing. It's like oof. Um, put, put no, no, I'm, not me. <laughs> yeah, not, not recently. <laughs> um, but great stuff. Well, look, um, well, guys, we're gonna we're gonna sort of finish there. Thanks for for obviously join in today i hope it's been useful in a way um dave you got any final thoughts on that i know we, um, we've covered a lot off today i think on, on social no social yeah possibly. i just think anyone that's um you know considering taking the plunge and booking a trip and you know is really excited about doing stuff that don't let the fact that you can't convince your mate to go with you put you yeah. off um because you know never know it could be the making of you exactly uh bry wants his vaseline back sure bright yeah next time i catch up mate i will hand it back to you mm. um I've used quite a bit now, though. <laughs> yeah, you know that Vaseline tub on Kill Bill? That's oh, kind of what it looks oh, like now. Disgusting. <laughs> um, but great stuff. Yeah, have a, have a top week, whatever you're up to. Um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be um, all fun and games uh, coming into next week. Um, and just a, a final reminder, if you are looking to book in, don't forget, it is the final day to use um, your discount code. So do get booking in if you're keen to lock in a future trip. Um, other than that, just reach out to, to ourselves and the team. Um, then we'll catch you next week. Uh, but yep. yeah, as Spud says there, we should do a Never Trek West. I think he's volunteering track. to be the guide, isn't he? There we are, Spud. <laughs> there we are. Well, uh, now we'll do it independently. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, no, but I hope all is well. Have an awesome week, and we'll see you next week. Guys. Take it easy. Bye. Maybe we'll recover. Oh, I need some papers to shuffle. <laughs>